Okay, part two of the Orc OR situation. Stuart Hameroff, before Orc OR, doing very classical types of um, research, I guess you could say, or at least, if anything, he was looking into computational models for neurons. And he, he's a researcher, uh, an anesthesiology researcher, and he was looking at microtubules, microtubules. And um, these microtubules are interesting things, okay? So one thing they, they are is that they make up the cytoskeleton of a cell. They only appear in eukaryotic life, okay? So eukaryotic life, those are, everything that's in a multicellular life form of any sort is a eukaryotic life form. And some single-celled things like protozoa are eukaryotic. So obviously, the eukaryotic single-celled life form evolved and then somehow it had the ability to form more coherent complex colonies so-called multicellular life all right so for example the the shape of a protozoa that distinctive shape that is supported by microtubules right um, but they also they have some other interesting properties and things to, to look at about them for example, flagella and cilia in eukaryotic life are made from microtubules. So what are those? So the flagella are the things that, that like hairs, fibers that extend outside the cell and it can wiggle them and move. And cilia though, even more interesting, are like sense receptors. They're also little fibers, but they're there to collect light, for example. in uh, eukaryotic life that is light sensitive will be using cilia to detect the light. All right, the, the uh, cones, cilia to detect the light. Furthermore, this is like a train system. If I put in some pictures, you'll see that these tubules, they're chemicals that hook onto the outside of the tubes and can inch along them. You know, and when light hits one end, it starts a chain reaction and these chemicals are transported along the tubule. And it's the transportation network inside the cell when these chemicals are being moved around and that's mi microtubules that are doing that. They all lead to the nucleus. Mitosis is very much involved with the microtubules uh, sort of sorting themselves out. So Hameroff was looking into if these microtubules perform computation because as a protein is moved along and uh, a microtubule it's also processed and changed and it's certainly possible that you could design a computational system uh, out of something like microtubules but you know it's not clear it's not you can't assume that that, that that it's being used for computation now there's this particular kind of tubulin that is only found in neurons and this is what he was studying and he was studying it on a computational model of mind of that perhaps computation is going on in the microtubules because they act as a circulation system, as bones, and basically as whatever is going to be the thinking apparatus, the behavioral computational apparatus. When we talk about a single cell as being reactive, it needs a computational at least system to do that. The microtubules are like these nerves of the little cell, or at least the communication channel, you know, just as a metaphor, as an analogy. Obviously, they're not nerves. Nerves are made out of cells that themselves have microtubules. And Hameroff started to think that the microtubules were very important to cognition. And indeed, in Alzheimer's, besides these amyloid plaques, another thing that happens is that microtubes uh, decay. All right, um, they're not particularly stable to begin with. Um, so, I will stop there. Um, next, I will talk about how these two ideas came together. And it would be good to look up microtubules, a tubulin, which is the protein that they're made out of, uh, and possibly Stuart Hammerhoff.